Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Naja. Just a small note, this guide is being written at the very, very start of Season 10, so very little of the item interactions and map mechanics introduced in Season 10 will be explored here. Naja is a unique assassin in Smite, seen almost exclusively as a jungler, but actually isn't terrible as a soul laner. Unfortunately though, these two roles play very differently until the late game, so this guide will focus on Naja as a jungler. Still though, here's builds for both roles. Naja's builds run far and wide. You can go a basic full power pen build, a bruiser build, and Naja is a unique case of an assassin who can build just about any type of counter item, like full defense items like spectral and breastplate, and niche counter items like wingblade. For now though, just keeping it simple with whichever one of these builds feels best to you will be just fine. Relics wise, in both soul lane and jungle, you want both beads and blink. In the jungle, starting with blink, and in the soul lane, usually starting with beads. Let's dive into Naja with one of the more fun passes from a god from this time period. Every time Naja successfully connects a basic attack or ability, he gains a stack on his passive, and critically striking grants two stacks. Each stack grants 0.5% movement speed, meaning he can have up to 10% extra movement speed from simply, um, walking around hitting stuff. This makes his farming in the jungle absolutely stellar, able to bounce between camps and lanes alike faster than any god during the early game, and it's still enough for him to get around the jungle faster than most assassins, even with dashes and leaps taken into account. Naturally though, this is thanks to his abilities as much as his basic attacks, so let's touch on Naja's incredibly unique basic attack chain before his abilities. Naja basic attacks twice normally, winds up for a heavier 1.5 times blow, then winds up for an even longer time for a very, very strong 2 times power blow which strikes in an AoE. It's a very weird basic attack chain but you have to be aware of as well as play around it as Naja. Given the movement speed passive, I'm sure you can guess Naja is quite good at chasing down targets, but this basic attack chain is extremely slow, so it helps keep him in check from just holding down left click with that movement speed, but also gives you huge benefits in terms of burst damage on enemies and minions alike if you're able to pace yourself and get that third but most importantly, final 2 times hit on an enemy god. And if that final blow crits, well, they're done. Other than spacing out basic attacks of course, your only option to keep this basic attack chain from slowing you down is by using your abilities to reset the chain, so let's get to them. Naja throws out a thin, fast-moving projectile. The projectile will slow and damage the first enemy hit, dealing full damage and reducing their protections by a flat amount. It then bounces to nearby enemies, prioritizing gods. These successive hits after the first one do reduce damage, but will slow for a higher amount, and still provide that protections reduction. Plus as a bonus to this now huge swing and advantage in Naja's favor, he even gets movement speed for every ring bounce, including the first one, meaning with his passive he can get absolutely ridiculous movement speed gains. Keep in mind though that the amount of bounces increases as you level it, so don't expect the ring to always bounce to a god or to hit the whole wave until it's at least rank 3. That is about the only downside with this ability though. All you have to do is aim it once, then it goes on to hit everything in a 5 mile radius for you, slowing and stripping their protections while speeding you up so you can do, well, just about anything you want. I've talked about abilities before where I say you want to throw it out whenever you can, but Naja's ring toss takes that to another level. You really want to use it whenever you can, and everyone on the enemy team is afraid of it and will avoid you to prevent getting ring tossed. Throw it on every minion wave, throw it on every enemy god, throw it on objectives like fire and gold fury with enemy gods nearby to poke them, you get the idea. It's a self-reliant poke and movement speed stealing tool that does everything you could ever ask for from a slow on an assassin. This all leads to it actually being a decent escape tool as well. And keep in mind, you can ring bounce a camp that's in front of you and have the ring bounce to enemies chasing behind you. So once more, use it. All the time. Now let's get to something a bit more simple. For Naja's second ability, he heals. This heal increasing when you have more passive stats. Then gains attack speed and critical strike chance. So already I'm sure you've guessed that this ability is stellar for when you successfully land a ring toss and are ready to get in basic attack range. And of course, you get a nice basic attack cancel with this ability as well to keep yourself in the quicker parts of your basic attack chain too. Talking about the healing portion for a moment though, this can really heal you for a good amount once you get out of the early game, and of course having a good amount of passive stacks on top of that too. It's great for helping Naja out while boxing in the jungle or healing himself in the middle of teamfights. So while the movement speed on the passive is great too, this is just another very good reason to keep your passive stacked as often as possible. This heal just gives Naja a lot of flexibility and it's what allows him to do the solo lane as well as he does. Plus, bolsters is already great farming with extra healing sustain on top of that. But when it comes to flexibility, few abilities are as iconic as Naja's third ability. Naja winds up and fires the sash out in a wide AoE. This AoE does not affect minions or jungle monsters and does not go through walls. Although upon impact with an enemy god, it will stun and heavily damage them as well as any enemy around them upon damaging, and Naja will move himself closer to the enemy god hit with the ability. But keep in mind if they have too much DR on them, they might be able to move again before you're actually able to reach them. 
On the surface, it's very simple. Catch an enemy alone or catch someone with your first ability and bam, use this ability. But this ability's immunity frames gives it something to consider. Remember when I said this ability has a long windup? Well, when trying to connect with an enemy, you can regard that time spent as both punishable time and immunity time depending on whether or not you hit it. When missing an enemy, you are left wide open to attack and it's one of the most easily punishable moves in the game. However, upon connecting the ability, you can easily immune complete abilities with the time it takes for the ability to connect. There aren't many abilities quite like it, so it'll take some time to get used to. But since covering every instance of immuning big abilities takes too long to cover, it's safe to say that for the most part this is just perfect setup for after or just before connecting your first ability and going into your second ability. This is not just a big opportunity to close gaps as well as shut down channeled abilities during trades with enemies. So really, using it optimally, it is oftentimes dependent on understanding your opponent's god as much as your own. So like with Persephone, keep it simple with this ability until you have a deeper understanding of what it can and cannot immune with those immunity frames and or interrupt with that stun. And just instead, keep it as a ranged setup tool for your first ability, but more importantly, your ultimate. Najra dashes forward quickly with a very narrow hitbox. If Najra collides with an enemy god, he will damage and stun them, and then banish them up into the air with him. As in, they are both banished at this point. Najra then strikes three times. These strikes will crit if you basic attack at the right timing, clearly shown when it tells you to attack. They are then both brought crashing down, damaging and knocking up the enemy hit again. And Najra gains protections after landing for safer follow-up. And keep in mind the enemy will land directly where they were when they first got hit. So it's perfect to team with gods like Ra, Thoth, Vulcan, Poseidon, etc. Who just have insanely hard hitting but also hard to hit ability. Also, a little trick if you're in trouble after using this ability, as in if you're deep in the enemy's backline, you can hold any directional input while landing and you'll be shot backwards. Don't ask me how or why it works. As a matter of fact, it kind of happens at random sometimes when you're not pressing anything, but it's still very useful. So using this while ganking is very clear. Either you blink three and you get their beads, so you ring bounce, then follow with this, or you blink dash and they don't have beads, so you ultimate immediately. In T fights though, this can be a bit more tricky. At the competitive level, this ability is used to take whoever is most effective in the fight out of the fight. So tanks, squishies, doesn't matter. The idea is just to get them out of the fight. That's not really gonna work in an uncoordinated ranked and casual matches though, so instead you want to constantly be throwing that ring bounce out over and over and over again, then once a fight breaks out, go for a sash on an enemy squishy. Now, they are going to use their beads here, so really the best thing you could do is ring bounce for some self peel and judge the situation. But the problem is, they're almost certainly going to beads this. So you have to pop your heal and wait for the next best opportunity now that you're in there to ultimate. This obviously sounds flimsy, so once you get better with Naja, you should be trying to blink ult people to give them almost no chance to react in beads in time. Because remember, once they're in the air, they can't do anything. They can't beads, they can't ages, they can't be saved by a teammate, so they're all yours. And as you can tell, unless Naja somehow gets in range to basic attack a mage or a hunter, this is the only way he's able to kill people in the late game. But that said, boy can it. This ability could easily take 3 fourths of a mage or a hunter's life bar, so team that up with a sash or a few basic attacks and that's their life gone. So clearly a huge risk reward, so let's keep going with some combos. 1, 3, basic attack. Three, basic, one, basic. Three, basic, ultimate. You typically want to skip the basic attack in the late game just to get it off, then chase with one, two. One, three, basic, ult. Blink, ult, one, basic, two, basic, then chase with the sash. Okay, so quick clip for you here. So uh, in this clip, I am a soloing Naja against Surtur, newest god on the PTS. Basically here, he underestimates me a little bit and I use the ring bounce in a pretty cool way, use the three in a pretty cool way. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going on totem now. I see he's on the cooldown buff, so I'm trying to bait him over to the fight at the totem because I still have my, uh, still have my life still shard up. Okay, so he missed the stun. I uh, saw he yanked a magma thing out of the ground. I think you want to, on Searcher, you want to do that as quickly as possible so people don't have time to react. But regardless, I won off of the uh, totem. It actually goes to the wave. It doesn't bounce off the totem and him specifically. That's what I was hoping for, but it didn't happen here. So I'm just focusing the totem for now because I know I have the AoE basic attack cleave coming up. And then, of course, I maintain all the movement speed and MP5 after the totem's killed. I want to do that, pop that, get the AoE basic attack and then three. So I canceled the uh, end of the basic attack chain with my three there. Um, so there's no recovery time. Then immediately go into the ultimate. After there, basic attack. 
and then ring bounce off of the minions because it, it's always just safer just to ring bounce the minions. The ring bounce doesn't do very much damage. So um, ring bounce off the minions to confirm I get it and then just chase them down from there. And I was actually, okay, I spam taunted because I was 0-1 because I got ganked. But yeah, that was a pretty cool solo kill with Dr. Naja. Okay, and this one's just a fun little clip. This was a pretty cool thing I did. See, this is just the flexibility of Naja. Ready? All right, so I'll ring bounce the wave here. It doesn't bounce to her, which sucks, but that's fine. And now I have the AoE cleave coming up. So I'm going for the archers, right? I'm going to cleave the archers for sure. About to do it. Boom. So I canceled the basic attack chain with the three. So it was a uh, pretty clear bait by me. Seems like I'm going for the archers, but I'm not. I cancel it. It goes straight to the three. Basic attack ultimate. The basic attack was a little uh, excessive, but I was support Naja, so I needed. I definitely needed to. But yeah, that was a uh, pretty cool kill on the Scylla, thanks to me baiting out with the basic attack chain. For ability leveling, you want your 1 at level 1, your 3 at level 2, and your 2 at level 3. From there, you want to max your 1, your 3, then your 2, leveling the ultimate whenever you can. For me personally, I've been point skipping at level 8 so I can level my ultimate and ring at level 9, but I see nobody else doing this so it's probably not necessary, but give it a try if you like the sound of it. Naja is one of the golden gods of smite to me. N not, not like that. You can keep things basic with him and be effective, but there's so much spice you can do with him, especially around that basic attack chain and the sash. You know, and the ult actually and the ring toss too i guess okay this character is just great he's a character that heavily rewards you for knowing every interaction and possibility in the game for things like what you can immune with your sash what you can bounce rings off of to save yourself and or confirm a kill baiting out beads to get a free ultimate out things like that he's an awesome god to pick up but but might make you feel a little lost and very useless at times since teams will play specifically around you to prevent you from getting an ultimate off on anyone important but to me that just goes to show naja's insane potential if you get everything right to me, the best Naja player of all time is adapting, so if you want to watch some of his ridiculously clean Naja plays, check out some of his gameplay videos. That's all I have on Naja for now. Thanks for watching.